Hey guys, it's uh, Materi, and I'm here with a tutorial about super saws. Um, yesterday I found out how to make really nice super saws, um, kind of like seven lines and uh, and like singularity and whatnot. So I'll be going over how to do stuff like that. So first of all, this is all going to be in massive, and the first thing I'm going to do is drag an instrument rack. And I'm going to open everything. So now in our first chain, so if we create a, train, a chain, we can call this um, lower octave. Okay, so we have a lower octave, which uh, we're going to make first. And everything is really going to be based around this. So let's drag in massive. Just drop an instrument or sample here. You just drag it and drop it. So now, <clears throat> when this decides to load, I'll show you what we're going to do. Um, okay, well, anyway, what I was going to say is you're going to want to make some really big chords. So um, if you don't make good chords, then your pads and like super saws are never going to sound good, like ever. Um, that's just something that I've learned, um, and it's something that I have to deal with. So we can make a simple thing. My headphones kind of suck. So you can see, like, already I have, like, six notes or something. And that's usually the amount of notes I have when I have a super saw, so... And I really do suck at making chords, so don't laugh at me as I spend 20 minutes to do this. Let me shift it up just so I could hear it a little better.
I know it doesn't need to be perfect, but I'm actually liking this, so sorry that I'm taking a while. But you guys can watch how I do this, and you can learn if you don't already know how to make chords and whatnot. I just do it one at a time, and I listen to see if it sounds good. So I don't know anything about chords, and that's it sucks, but I mean, I make do, so... Okay, so uh, this sounds good, and so now we can actually get on to making our sound. I'm sorry it took so long to make that chord progression, but oh well. So you can already tell it sounds pretty good, but the first thing I'm going to do is go into Massive and press uh, File New Sound, and that'll just initialize everything to a saw. It'll make my amp envelope um, the sustain all the way up. It's just nice to work from. So I have the saw. I'll route it to Filter 1. And I'll set filter 1 to a um, low pass 4. And I'm going to click on this button over here in Massive and press Configure right here. You can barely see it. I'm going to click on my cutoff and I'm going to click on my resonance. And real quick, I'm going to right click on them after, so I unclicked Configure so I don't accidentally press anything else. I'm going to put my filter to macro 1 and my resonance to filter 2, I mean macro 2. And I'll rename them real quick. Cutoff res. Okay, so that's good. And we can put this all the way up for now. Whoa. Okay. Anyway. The first thing I'm going to want to do is probably bring this up to somewhere under 10, but more than f like 4. And I like to keep in the even numbers just because... Um, when for me for some reason if i use like five voices then the left side or the right side will be louder than the other but if i use an even amount then it's like not it's weird but anyway let's do this let's lower the volume pan position we could put that on and we could also put on wavetable position and bring this up to like 20 or something let's hear how detuned it sounds So I'm going to bring it up to 40 right now, and I'm going to drop it down to maybe a fourth or something. And one thing I'm also going to do is use Dimension Expander and just bring the size down. And I'm also going to boost the highs a little bit and drop the lows a little bit. And since this is my lower octave, I'm going to hold Alt and click and drag down once. So I bring my octave down. Okay, so that's actually sounding pretty good, and just because I'm going to put a chorus ensemble on. So I'm just turning down the rate so it's not as detuned, and I'm also going to turn down the wet dry so it's not too much of the chorus effect. So it's very subtle on this one. 
but um, this is pretty much it. So now we can click on our chain and we can press Control D and that'll duplicate it and we can make a higher octave and now if we have that chain selected we can click on the little wrench and we can double click on our pitch and that'll bring this one to zero and now if we listen to it <laughs> be thinking hey we're done it sounds good and it does sound good but to really make this pop we really have to do a few more things so um, if you do like it and you do think you're gonna want to use this you could save it and then you could start working on and adding to it but uh, I'm just gonna add to it so I'll press Control D on the higher octave one and I'll change this to D tuned okay and as it states, we're going to detune it. So I'm going to solo it by clicking on the little solo on the chain. And I'm going to listen. And I'm going to bring this one down, down an octave. I'm going to put the rate on the chorus up in the dry wet. And you could hear that kind of detunes it already. But I also want to detune it over here. And you might be thinking, wow, that sounds really bad. And it does, alone. But um, let's listen to what it sounds like. Let's first of all lower the lows. And I forgot to do that on this one, so I'm going to do that real quick. Um, I don't really need to listen to it because I'm just lowering the lows. And I'll boost the highs on the higher octave. So now back to detuned. So alone, it sounds weird, but watch what it sounds like with everything. So you can hear it really fills out everything and it's starting to make stuff sound a little bit like um, more full. So another thing that we're going to do is we could duplicate this and we could call this one white noise. <clears throat> And one thing that we could do is we could turn off our oscillator, our chorus effects, our dimension expander. Um, we could turn our EQ on, keep it on, just lower the lows. And uh, I just double click on the highs to make them uh, regular, like back to the middle. I'll turn the voices down to one and I'll turn both of these off and I'll just put my amp all the way up and route this to filter one. <laughs> And this is probably going to be loud, but I'm trying to make it so that it gets to the top. Perfect. Okay. And the reason I do that is for mixing purposes. And right now we can go and we can press tab and we can um, lower all these. And now we can start mixing them in. So, I'll lower all of them, the volumes. And I'm really focusing on this one, so I want to change this one to zero, actually. And now, I'm going to play with it until... I'm going to probably get it around negative 10. The negative 10 area, just because there are four sounds. And all of those together are going to be pretty loud. So you could hear I just brought that in until it started to sound good. Um, I like the lower octave uh, sound a little bit more than the higher octave sound. So that's why you see this one's louder. And uh, that's just personal preference. So now I'm going to bring the detuned one in. And 
and now finally the white noise, which I don't want to be too loud. I don't want people to know that it's white noise, kind of. It's really weird to explain. That's just something that when mixing, I prefer to do with uh, white noise. So. Okay, so you can see that this is peaking at um, negative three. So I'm gonna select all of these and I'm gonna bring them up in till, I'm gonna bring them up probably like two decibels until this starts peaking at around zero. And the reason I do that is I wanna use this as kind of my um, instrument fader as opposed to all these. Um, when I get down to mixing and like playing with the levels of the track, It'll just be easier to use this than every time just to do this. And since these sound good relative to each other, I'm going to select all of them, like I said before, and I'm going to bring them up together. <clears throat> and that's just going to keep the relationship in volumes um, the same. And that's close enough for me, honestly. <laughs> now uh, we could go back and we could start EQing this so it doesn't sound too muddy. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually cut the lows off of everything. So I'll first do that with an EQA. I'll copy it and I'll just drag this or uh, paste it into every single one because I know I'm going to want the lows cut out of them. So now I could solo them and start listening to what frequencies I could take out. I know probably in the lower ones I want some of the 1Ks and uh, upper mids to be uh, cut out to make room for the higher octave. So let's hear. <laughs> I'm just listening, I hear kind of a nice little ring here, so I'm gonna just boost it. And you can hear it sounds muffled alone, um, and that's because we cut out the mids, um, or the 1K area. And that's going to happen with all your um, sounds if you cut out the 1K area. It's going to sound muffled. It's going to sound like it's kind of nasally almost. But um, <clears throat> this is good We're, because uh, we want to make room in that area for our higher octave. So let's play this until we get something nice. So, so you can already see that we're peeking around here. So we could bring this way up. So I'm just going to... Okay, so that sounds pretty good. And now time for the detuned one, which is in the lower register as well, so. Okay, so uh, that sounds pretty good. I just lowered some of the mids and uh, 
just boosted a little bit of the highs, not too much. And uh, let's see how this all sounds together. And let me finally just do this real quick. So I really want the um, white noise to be in the higher register, so. I could just do this real quick, which is easy. And the nice thing about Ableton Live 9 is that you have these four time or four times uh, roll offs. So uh, for each decibel over or something, it's like four decibels cut. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's really weird. Um, but there we go. And it sounds really good right now. Um, I don't have any reverb on it. Uh, I do have a send set up so I can do send reverb. But uh, this is nice without the reverb. Uh, just the way it is. And I could really do these fast cuts like I was doing. So that's another reason not to have reverb. Uh, you could automate the send reverb if you wanted to. Uh, another thing that we have to do, the last thing that we have to do to really finish this sound off is add a sub. And let's just drag Massive in, click New Sound. Let's just go straight to our sign and square. Just bring it so Ooh. like it's there. Let's uh, bring this down, duplicate it, and let's fold it and uh, delete all these higher um, notes so we just have the bass note. Okay. Okay, so that sounds good, and I have my own little uh, sub-processing chain in here. So my sub-processing chain is pretty easy. I could go over it in another video if you guys want. Uh, but I can press it, and then I split the frequencies, so anything above 100 hertz gets side-chained. Is it anything above, or ev anything above 65 hertz gets side chained? Then anything below that is just compressed um, heavily. I think is that the way I do it? No, I do a heavy compression. Then I split the frequencies so that anything above 65 gets side chained to my kick. So I would put my kick in here. And then my subs, my anything below 65 or 60, um, just is unaffected by the side chain. And that's so I could have a nice lower sub playing, even if the kick is side chaining some of my higher subs. And that's just gonna make the mix sound a lot better with the sub bass and the kick. Um, you won't get muddy frequencies. And then I have an EQ8 that just cuts off anything above let's say uh, 100 hertz or below 100 hertz uh, no above 100 hertz it cuts anything above 100 hertz and then i put a utility so i can mono modify i guess you could say um, so i can make my sub uh, mono rather than being wide so if i do 50 percent it's usually at 100 percent but if i do 50 percent 
then uh, that's going to make it more mono, which is good. You want your low end to be mono, so it's nice and tight. Um, so let's hear how this sounds with the bass and everything. Okay, so now let's hear what this is with the cutoff and res and everything. Okay, so that sounds really nice actually. I really like that. Um, I guess I'll go over the main points once again, uh, just to really summarize everything and bring it all together and make this video, if you're just skipping through, if you come to the end, then hopefully you'll go back and watch it. But uh, I assume most of you guys watched it, but I'm gonna summarize it anyway. Uh, we're gonna want for a really good, big sounding, um, super saw pads the first thing that you're always going to want to do is make sure you have really big cords um if you watch some of the pros and how they make their pads and whatnot they have a lot of notes they have upwards of 10 maybe even more than that right here i'm just using six notes for each chord and uh that sounds really good for me for right now um, another thing is that we're going to want to layer our sound. So by using an instrument rack, we can put multiple chains, which are just different instances of massive that we can do different things to. So like here we have this where we can open it up and it's literally different tracks. So each chain is its own track. And in one chain, we want a lower octave. So it's playing like the lower end, not too low because we don't want to have all that sub bass, just low enough where it sounds good. And we're gonna EQ everything. We're gonna EQ the, uh, for the low end of our super saw, we're gonna cut off all the lows from 100 and we're gonna take out some of the area where the higher um, pads are gonna hit or the higher octave's gonna hit. And uh, then we're gonna have a higher octave chain which is the same thing as our lower octave only brought up one, like one octave and we're gonna just take out all the lows from that that were in the lower octave, and we're gonna boost where we took out of the lower octave. So since in the lower octave we took out around 1K, in the higher octave we're gonna boost around 1K. Not too much though. Um, if you boost above three decibels, then it might sound kind of bad. So you can see here I'm almost at three decibels, but whatever. Or I'm a little bit above. So I think the rule is never go above six. That's what I do. Um, okay, so another chain that we have is a detune chain, which is the same thing as the lower octave um, chain, only we really detune it. We make it sound really discordant, and it just doesn't sound good on its own. But together with everything, it just really makes everything nice and uh, big. And uh, finally, uh, we have a little bit of white noise, which is very subtle. And that's just to really bring out the high end. So we cut out everything on the low end and we just have it playing in the high end. And that'll make our sound sound more full if it doesn't sound full already. And it just makes it sound really nice. Then outside of everything, I have just a simple EQ just to make it sound a little nicer taking off some of the frequencies that are too harsh maybe, 
So you can see here on my um, little fifth node, I take down a little bit on the higher mids or mids area. Um, and then to really make the sound sound full, because I mean, it sounds good, but you really need a sub. So if you have a good sub under it, it'll sound significantly better. So just remember those um, rules. I hope that summary was good enough. Um, and I hope you guys learned something. I, I really don't like using um, presets. So I've been learning how to do all this stuff and I'm now sharing it with you guys so you guys don't have to rely on presets that <clears throat> maybe you have a sound in your head and now you can make it into reality without using presets. So like uh, you can get the same sound out of Nexus but it's just so much more gratifying and uh, rewarding to see work that you put in to a sound actually sound really good like this. So I hope you guys learned something like I think I said before. And uh, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. You can share with your friends. Just uh, pass on the knowledge, I say. You don't even like have to credit me, really. Uh, you could be like talking to your friend and tell them about how to make pads. You don't even have to say where you learned it from. Yeah. It's just passing on the knowledge is good. Um, so thanks for watching again, and goodbye.